In the previous video, we looked at the effect of changing interest rates on the bond price. We observed that as the discount rate increases, the value of the bond falls, and the sensitivity of the bond depends uh, to a large extent on the maturity of the bond. For longer dated instruments, we tend to find that the bond price falls more dramatic, particularly when rates of interest are low. A small increase in interest rates tends to have a fairly dramatic increase, fairly dramatic impact on the bond price. So the bond increasing in the interest rate tends to reduce the bond price dramatically when the maturity is high and uh, less dramatically when the interest rate, when the maturity is low. So maturity is low here, it's a three year bond an increase in interest rates tends to have a smaller effect than when the bond price is when the bond maturity of 30 years uh, small increase in interest rates tend to have a much more uh, dramatic effect in terms of the change in the bond price so so uh, we can look at in addition to the bond price, we can look at this question from another perspective and incorporate in what's known as yield to maturity. Uh, generally speaking, we actually know the bond price. The bond price is a price that gets reported in the market. Uh, we generally know the coupon structure, we know the maturity, and what we may actually be missing, what we may want to find out is the interest rate or the discount rate consistent with a particular bond market price. So uh, one relatively simple way of uh, estimating the yield to maturity in a bond is to, let's take the example we were just using and copy and we might say okay we have the same information as before, but it may be, what if the bond price was equal to $1,100? Okay, so what interest rate, let's say this is a 10 year bond, um, Previously, we had looked at 10, 20, 30, 40, year um, well, a range of different bonds. For instance, here we looked at um, a 20 year bond, let's say, and you might notice that as we reduce the interest rate, the bond price increases. So, at what rate of interest? is the bond value, is the bond equal to, let's say, 1,100. Okay, so if we had this information, uh, copy, and we went and we pasted that again, we might ask, at what if the bond price is equal to 1,100? what is the yield to maturity or the consistent discount rate okay so we're looking to find now one simple way of doing that is we could go to gold seek so again, this would be data, what if analysis, gold seek, and we would say set the value of our bond equal to the 1100, 1100, by changing the discount rate. And the discount rate here is 0 0.06 and hit return. And we find that the bond, if the interest rate or discount rate is 5.19, uh, 
the bond price would be 1110 and again if we go back to if we substitute back in let's take that value again 5.19 and we were to put it here 0 0.0519 I think 0 0.04 just verify that 51904 and of course it should be a 20 year bond then yes we get a thousand and ten okay so a uh, we can do this through trial and error i mean that's one approach and uh, typically there is uh, if we go into our notes here i can show you a technique known as interpolation and we could verify the value you know could ask the question if our bond price was if we took this as our question copy paste and set up the spreadsheet here paste what is the rate of interest consistent with a bond price of 101077 where the coupon rate is six percent and the time to maturity is three years well it's a payment once a year it's a coupon it's a three-year bond and we're looking for a bond price we actually know the answer to this question because the value of the uh, it should be 5.6 percent but if we because it's that's the original example we set off using but we could use gold seek set the value of this cell where we've estimated the value of the bond to value 1010.77 by changing the discount rate and we get a value of 5.6 percent so that's we could use gold seek and that's a very handy tool that's available in excel uh, that we can call upon uh, to estimate the internal rate of return on a bond or the yield to maturity but in addition we could also use a specified function um, and that function um, I have written here so I, so we might just copy it into our into the developer into the module okay so basically it calls upon the function we've already developed and using a bisection technique it uh, estimates the yield to maturity consistent with the bond price so let's take this code put into our developer into visual basic so let's put it down below paste and we can remove this and basically what we have is if we know the coupon rate the time the maturity the face the periodicity of the bond and the market price the target if you like is the market price we observe we can estimate this function will estimate the yield to maturity so let's just see does it actually work okay so let's copy that function copy and go back into our spreadsheet and we could innocently start from six percent again so we get a power value of a thousand and then we could uh, paste our function so let's just do it here and paste again and we could say equal to and then we could say okay CPR the coupon rate is six the time period is three years the face value of the bond is 1000 the maturity sorry the periodicity of the coupon payment is once a year so one and the target value we'll just enter in manually for the moment 101077 so we're looking to find the interest rate discount rate or yield to maturity consistent with this bond price okay and the other bond details so let's hit return so 
So it, the screen froze. I'm going to try that again. And um, I also changed the order of the code. Um, so let's go back into the spreadsheet and try that one more time. And we get, in this instance, it seems to have worked well. So we have the value that we get is consistent with our starting point. If we go back to the initial example, when we discounted at 5.6% each year for the three years, the value of the bond is 1077. When we turn the question on its head, what rate of interest is consistent with a bond price of 101077, the answer must be 5.6%. Uh, Let's have a look at the code for a moment. The That's our, how we frame the question. We'll just take this um, function to one side, so we'll cut it out and move it over here. And uh, we'll have a look at the code. So going back into the developer tab, uh, taking out the functions, there's two functions, one that's estimating the value of the bond and the other function which estimates the yield to maturity. So the f this VBA code is no more than an implementation of a present value annuity formula where we take the coupon rate the coupon rate divided by the periodicity and multiply by the face so we get the coupon cash coupon amount and then we discount that at 1 minus 1 plus r divided by m to the power of the number of years times the f periodicity of the coupon coupon payment divided by r over m plus the discounted face value so that's the present value of the Nuzi formula being put into operation. This other function is a bisection, bisection function. And basically what it does, we can have a look at it here. It says we want to estimate, if we know the target value of the bond, now in this case the target value is 101077, so we might take the target value to mean the market value okay keep estimating the bond until the present value annuity formula produces a value very close to the market price of the bond so basically we seed the um, this formula here we say okay let's implement this formula and we take the coupon rate as given and then the rate of interest are we substitute in a H and an L, high and a low, and the high and the low is initialized at uh, 200% and 0%. And then we take divide that by 2, and then T is the time period and phase, and then the same. We estimate if the value is higher than the target. So if the value of the bond is higher than the 1010 77, which we would have had here, it says then your new low should be equivalent. So if the market value, now it will turn out that because the interest rate 200% divided by plus 0%, 200% plus 0% divided by 2 is 100%. So when we discounted 100%, at 100% typically we find the bond price estimated will be higher than the tar will be lower than the target so we go to else and second time round the new h will be the old h plus the old zero old l divided by 2 so the new h will be 100 and as as we keep in incorporating in uh, the very high value of h it will go to the loop and bring h down and that will keep occurring until the value of h and l falls to value of less than this very minuscule value here 